Hello again, this is a, a, a survival still as we showed before. So as like I shared with you, you can take this with you anywhere. And the convenient thing about it is the pots and pans that you already have, the standard ones, in most cases will actually work for you. And you can, uh, again, you can take a look at the size because of the room that we have here. Something can sit on the top, it's that size. And on the bottom, you see there's two ridges. And as long as the bottom pot fits between these two ridges, you'll be just fine. Now, what we all know as you take a look at distilled water is you really want stainless steel. That's why this is stainless steel. And it's so strong and, and so, uh, and its lifespan is, is, by the way, I'm glad we brought up lifespan because this is, has a lifetime warranty. Lifetime warranty. Hopefully you won't have to use it all the time, but it has a lifetime warranty and it's the only one out there due to its durability and the way, the way it's made. Now, going back to a survival situation, you've already got your own pots and pans or maybe you don't. But the point is, whatever you have at home, again, the best is stainless steel. But again, remember, this is survival. You may not have that available. So you may just grab a couple of, of uh, pots and pans that you, you have. Let's just pull this one. It doesn't even have to be electric. Take a look at that. Let's see if this fits. Yep, yep it fits. So you, you put in, you fill this up with water. Again, it doesn't have to be new. Remember, it's, it can be it uh, can be new if you want to purchase it from us, but what you have should be adequate. You fill this up with water. The way it looks, it's not important. It, this is not stainless steel, but we're in the survival mode. It's the best thing that we can find right now. It'll be just fine. Fill it up with water. Start boiling it, or as much water as you think you're gonna need. Start heating that on up. And who knows, uh, let it, as it starts heating up, you can, uh, before it starts boiling, you just let it sit like that a few minutes uh, before you put on the top. Reason being is you want some uh, gases to escape if there's really contaminants or there's a terrorist problem or whatever it might be in the water, allowing some of those gases to escape. You find yourself another pot and pan that fits up here on the top, let's see this. Oh yeah, that's, that's gonna fit right up on top, like this. It fits nicely. It's within the rim that we have here. Up here though, before you put this on, you put, uh, you put the water from, uh, from the trough, from the pond, from the slough, from, whatever, from wherever you get it in a survival situation, or from your kitchen sink and uh, when, if you're first testing it out so you can be familiar with it, you put it in there. And I tell people, put a piece of cloth or something up there on top if you're gonna be taking water from the slough or something like that for so your twigs and other things. Uh, don't fall in there. So place this up on top. The fire and heat start uh, boiling this and getting it hot. As I shared with you before on another video that the steam starts coming through the distillery area. It hits the bottom of this pan and condenses and comes out through this side. Now on the side you could get yourself a glass or something else. Uh, something that looks a lot prettier than this. You know, prettiness is not really the objective here. The objective is to have safe, pure, distilled water, even though there may be some gasoline in it, oil, salt, any, any contaminant that they might find out there in your water supply. It may even be in your faucet because uh, water can get contaminated from your faucet and uh, you, you really don't know. But from whatever the source is, uh, make sure that you keep this up here cool and you pull anything that you want to. I've got another I've got another pot and pan here. It's not the prettiest one but it doesn't matter. You set that in here and now the flame is coming on up heating the bottom of this. It's coming on up condensing. You've got a fire going and you've got distilled water that's being put in this pan or a glass or whatever receptacle that you have available to you. And that is really really important again. The versatility of this is second to none in reference to what you want. Now, I, generally in a perfect situation, I'd, I'd like one that's a little bit taller up here in your condensing area because, because as this steam comes on up and hits the bottom of your condensing pot, this gets really, really hot. So, uh, so as the hotter it gets, uh, the less likely that the steam is gonna be, come, be condensed and therefore pressure is elevated and you start seeing maybe a little steam coming out of the side. If you ever see the steam, a little steam coming out of the side,
then you know that your top boiling chamber the water in it needs to be changed and it's too hot. You know, I'm asked a lot of times is how much water can this produce? And uh, the answer is quite simple is it depends on your source water, how, you know, what, uh, what the makeup of it is, how much dirt it is, or whether it's salt water or whatever, it really depends on that. But more importantly, it really depends on your heat source. So the level of heat that you have to take care of this or to treat this is, is, is quite important. Uh, the hotter the flame, the quicker uh, the water is going to distill it and the more aggressive it's going to be and the more attention you're going to have to pay, uh, pay to this. Now, uh, pay attention, you're going to have, the more attention you're going to have to pay to your distiller. Now, you may ask, well, how much water can I get on this? Well, you could probably get 14 to 16 gallons a day once you really know your distiller. Uh, once, if you don't know your distiller, you're not going to be able to do that because you don't really know how to use the tool. But you have to remember that's 14 to 16 gallons a day optimally uh, over a 24-hour period. Now you're going to say 24 hours. Yes, in a survival situation, this is one of the most important things you have. 20, if you can make 14 to 16 gallons in a 24-hour period, you're going to have to have someone who's really attentive to this. Their whole job is to make sure that no one dehydrates and dies because of either sick water or because they don't have enough water. So uh, you're, this would have to be monitored 24 hours and it's no big deal, especially if your life is at stake. Now, if you're just gonna put this over your oven and, and stove and expect to get some distilled water and be real happy with it, you're not. Don't buy it if you're just gonna be using it for daily use. Unless you really, unless you really listen to what I'm saying is, it's inconvenient in that particular situation, but if you're gonna do it every once in a while for whatever reason, uh, uh, maybe you have an emergency situation in your own city, okay, that's fine. And so you'll have to use it in that case, but if you're gonna be using it in a daily uh, manner, then buy an electric distiller, one that uh, goes off of power, and we have those, we have great ones. But, but again, you'll only be happy, and I've seen, you'll only be happy if you know it's a survival distiller, it's made to give you, uh, it's made to make you feel secure and confident. It's made to eliminate any contaminants that they have. If there's a boil advisory out there, do not drink the water. If no one is drinking water, if they have to go for miles, you just go to the pond over there, or you just go to the slough, or you go to anywhere where it's wet, put it in this distiller, and you're gonna have the finest water that you can basically drink. You won't even be able to buy it. Uh, the quality of water that, uh, that this system will make for you.